He is the Golden Globe winning actor who currently stars in HBO Succession. Please welcome Brian Cox. Brian. Okay. There you go. You got it. All right. That was cold. So great to meet you. It's lovely to meet you. I, I, I didn't meet you many, many years ago, but you probably don't remember. I don't. I, I, I was stoned. No, I, was, I was so stoned. You were, actually. I, I, I remember it. I could feel the waft coming across me. Yeah. Uh, it, it was... Um, I did a thing called Nuremberg, and I won an Emmy, I, and you sat behind me. I was just going to... It's so funny. I was going to say to you, I first became aware of you uh, from when well, you played Goring. Yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. And, and that had to be like 25 years ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Something like I had that. Dark, and, yeah. and I swear to God, I said that, now that is a riveting actor. And when you got this part on Succession, and look, I'm a, I'm a fan of Netflix. I've said this before, I know those guys, and I certainly may need them someday. <laughs> so I don't ever want to piss them off. No, but I, I love Netflix. But like Netflix has a thousand shows. Oh yeah, I want to see that. HBO always has one show where like, I am so dying to see that oh, one. And your show is that show. Thank Sorry you. for touching you with No, no, you, uh, you can touch me as much oh, as you like. Touch okay. I, I, I agree with yeah, you about this whole thing. Yeah, so. it's crazy. Yeah. Um, but, uh, excuse me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just because I don't want to touch my face. <laughs> I have, it's, uh, making me crazy. Yeah, you can't touch anything. But, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. And, you know, I know they've said the character in Succession is... is Murdoch, but it, it seems more Trump to me because y well, even I think though he's you more intelligent than Trump, uh, way more intelligent, way more intelligent than Trump. But what they have in common is that you hate him for what he does, but there is something that people like about balls, mm -hmm. the sheer balls. Yeah. On it must be fun to play a guy. Yeah. First of all, to be a leading man yeah. at your age, <laughs> at my age, but especially one become a you, sex symbol as well. Right, yeah, really. <laughs> You're yeah. getting late on that no, show. No, you it, know, it, you have it's so funny. My, I was doing a thing and presenting for the new season, and my wife was sitting next to somebody out in the audience, and, and I came on, and this woman who was sitting next to my wife, she said, oh, that Brian Cox, he's so hot. <laughs> there you go. And then my wife said, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. And yeah. then she was so embarrassed. Oh, I'm so sorry, she said. But, uh, no, uh, it's it's a it's 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 a great role. You know, you have to wait so great. nearly sixty years before you get a role like that, and uh, it, it's a fantastic. But role. again, H I got to say, HBO. Like you think about James Gandolfini, yeah, uh, in Sopranos, yeah. or Steve Buscemi Steve in Boardwalk Buscemi. Empire. You. Ian Nobody McShane else would cast, Deadwood, yeah. Yeah, would cast these people. No, but no. they're riveting and they are oh, sexy. They are. Yeah. That's amazing. So okay, so you. I read Left Home at 11? No, 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 that's an exaggeration. I left home at uh, just... I was on the cusp of my 15th birthday. I was on 14. Yeah. Still ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in America, I yeah. mean, we, we don't let them, like, go to school. Well, I never without... left home. I just went to work. That was all, you know. Oh. <laughs> I got very bad information. No, 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 uh, I didn't know. <laughs> I, 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 well, actually, my home left me uh, uh, because of... Family circumstances, so I was pretty on my own. But and that's the Scottish way. Uh, it's the way of poverty. Actually, that's what it's about. And that made you a socialist? Of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm part of it. You know. I, well, I, I, yeah, and uh, yeah, and subsequently, uh, well, really a social democrat, and subsequently I, thank you, <laughs> and subsequently a, a supporter of my country. Scotland, which is... As had, a separate country. As a separate country. Because it's been... Which is... I mean... Because it's been treated like a ship pile for long enough. So it was my ancestors, Ireland. Well, I'm, I, I'm a Mi'kmaq, which is an Irish Scot. Well, the, we're the same people. They're we Cel are the Celtic same people. people. I, we are, and I we, have that, we have all those memories yeah, in our DNA. I don't think people realise that when the English conquered your country and my old country... They were conquering countries where people did not speak English. That's right. Wasn't that like they? I think they think they were were kind of a kindred spirit anyway. That's right. The Irish didn't speak English no. in 1850. No. And the Scots, I still can't understand. No, no, no. <laughs> really? No. It's a different language. Absolutely. No, it's it's. I mean, you know, it came to me because when I grew up, when I was a kid, and I used to, I live on a place. I grew up in a town called Dundee, which is my hometown, and I used to look at the. Um, the, the River Tay, and I used to... I couldn't wait to get across it. 
And uh, I did get across it. And then when I now, uh, it, it, in, that, in those days, it was North Britain. That's what it was, because we had been through two wars so that we'd never, and the Scots had been like cannon fodder, and particularly in the First World War. And uh, the Second World War, it was, you know, it was pretty even, Stephen, all, all around. But we had not found ourselves, and our country had been taken away from us at an earlier time uh, when we lost our parliament. So, and then we had, you know, the famous Culloden and all of that. But our independence had gone. And we've always been treated very feudally. And that still goes on. You have a great accent because there's a hint of it. Yeah. But not enough to go, what the fuck is he talking <laughs> yeah. about? You know? Thank you. But, uh, yeah, so, but let me ask you about this. You must have went through Brexit. Must Horrible. Have, okay. But I feel like Brexit was a harbinger of what was going to happen in this country, and we didn't, well, we I didn't mean, pay attention because it, it was soon after that Donald Trump got elected, and it was, uh, you know, and you have Boris Johnson, who looks like Donald Trump. We have... And he's a liar. Yeah, very much... You and, know, I and, mean, uh, the, the world is ruled by liars. Well, it always... That's Netanyahu always... Netanyahu in Israel, liar. Uh, Putin, Russia, liar. OK, politicians are generally liars. It's well, to some, a degree. Well, occasionally you get a good one. You know, occasionally yeah, okay. you come along. A good liar or a good politician? Uh, both. <laughs> OK, a good but what, what I'm asking you is... Uh, you just, the, the Labor Party just lost a tremendous election. They ran a guy named Jeremy Corbyn. Yeah. He looks, show the picture, he looks just like Bernie Sanders. And yeah. he is a 70 he's a 70-something socialist. Yeah. And they thought, oh, you know what? The working class is going to love this guy. He was promising the same thing yeah. as Bernie Sanders is promising. Big social programs, but taxes on is... the rich to pay for it. And the working class saw it as pie in the sky and said, no thanks, you lost the worst defeat since 1935. It's terrible, but then that's also partly to do with the whole Little Englander mentality. And also a mentality which... Uh, oh, by the way, I better take these bloody glasses off. Sorry about that. Uh, I mean, what happened... It's an interesting thing. I mean, his policies were interesting policies, but he has the charisma of a failed geography teacher. <laughs> And Which one are we talking about? Both. Okay. And, uh, uh, all right. Well, actually, Trump wouldn't understand anything about geography, but, uh, but I'm talking about Corbyn. <laughs> but what I think was really interesting is that his policies weren't bad. They were good policies. But the problem was he couldn't sell them. And uh, the problem was that we are so under... The... It's so interesting. You see, what happened? You know, part, you know, areas which were totally socialist for, totally for such a long, long time, areas, by the way by the way, in which in the last 10 years, due to austerity, particularly in that area, from the Tories, the death rate of women increased. It increased. Women were dying at a much earlier age than they had done previously. And that's because of conservative austerity. And that is what... And it was crazy to me that they didn't, they didn't bite on the bullet. They didn't say, oh, let's go with it, let's go with it. Because... The okay, geography so teacher couldn't sell it.